Hey, good morning, 8th grade. This is Mr. Justin. How y'all doing today? Ooh. I hope you're doing well. And I hope you had a good weekend. I hope that quarantine is going well for you. And that you're able to do something that's productive in your life. Like praying, serving God, uh, encouraging each other, uh, being entertained by good things. So, hope that you're doing well. I miss y'all. Can't wait to see you again. I have our next assignment that's going to be due by this Friday by midnight, okay? Uh, majority of y'all turn your things in. Uh, some of you forgot to do your memory verse until later and you did it. Um, there's only, I think, a few of you that haven't turned in your assignments. Please do that because you're getting 10 points taken off every day for your memory verse and you're getting points taken off for your participation as well. And once you get your points taken out of participation, you can't get those back. And so it's going to hurt you in the long run. So be sure to get your stuff done on time. All right. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to start putting things on gray link and send it to you by text and send it to you by email from my email. So I'm going to try to make it as easy as I can for y'all to access the assignments and know what, what needs to be done. All right. So today our, we're going to look at page 138 through 141 and I was going to read that over and and then uh, I'm going to show you what I want you to do for your assignment and I'm going to do it right here in front of you so that way you can know what what needs to be done all right so let's start off in prayer and then I'm going to go through that Lord I thank you for these eighth graders I lift them up every day every morning by name as I look at, at our class picture and, and I pray for each one Lord I ask that they would just draw close to you know that you're alive, that you that you are real, Lord, that you got a plan and purpose that's unique to them, and I pray your blessings over them. Whatever they're going through, uh, ups and downs of life, the situation we're going through, Father, we know that you're in control, and nothing can stop you, and Lord, uh, we look to you for every day. Uh, we look to you for food. We look to you for every breath. We look to you for, for everything. Lord, you sustain us. And uh, Lord, we, we pray that you would have your will and way in our lives. And I pray as I read this that we would be attentive, that we'd be focused, and that we would, most of all, be obedient to you, Lord. And I pray all this for Christ's sake and name. Amen. Amen. Let's turn the, your book to uh, page 138. And I'm going to start reading there. So page 138, it says, David... Grow in openness to God. When something bad is happening in my life, I talk to God even though I may not hear His voice out loud. I listen in my heart when bad things come. Something good has always come out of it. It has happened to me so I can trust God more. I read the Bible, and if any scripture just jumps out at me, I write it down. I also pray to God in my journal writing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about writing down uh, scripture, writing down uh points that have been made from this book to help us in our faith with all the emotional challenges that faced Christ christina in her life that was christina talking when i just read she's formed several spiritual habits that are very healthy for her to do and this must be christina right here so take a look at christina each of these habits involves acknowledging the way she feels first she listens to her heart she tries to hear god's voice or feel him in her spirit second christina reads the Bible and writes down any scripture that jumps out at her, how can she tell when a verse jumps out at her if she's not in touch with her inner feelings and questions? Third, she prays to God in her journal writing to write her thoughts and feelings down in a journal means that Christina is able to feel what's deep down inside of her heart. Writing helps her to put her feelings into words. Christina has learned to do what David did as he wrote the book of Psalms in the Bible. David freely expressed his feelings in words and music. David was a very intense and sensitive man of God. He experienced many emotional heights of joy. My soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowl. Psalm 124 7. He also felt moments of deep anxiety and discouragement. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 22 1. And Jesus said the same thing, didn't he? The book of Psalms is full of David's true feelings. There are songs in which he even questioned God's way and complained about being pursued by his enemies. But in the end, even without an answer from God, David ended his songs with worship, praise, and trust in his maker. David's life was like clay that was moldable in God's hands. And you all remember when we did the clay? Although he faced trials and made some major mistakes, God was still able to make to make him into a powerful king. 
David's closeness with God is an incredible example to follow. Do you express your feelings or your true feelings to God? Do you tell him when you're feeling good and when you're feeling down? If not, try to develop more of an open friendship with God. See how much closer your relationship will come and how it will benefit all of the other areas of your life. There's some good points there. Good points that we're learning from Christina. Good points that we can learn from David in the book of Psalms. And then we go to Judas. Avoid secrecy and isolation. I don't have anyone to talk to because nobody understands me. I like to handle things on my own. Is that the approach that a lot of y'all take? Uh, any of y'all take? With all the changes that you're experiencing, it's natural for you to desire to spend some time alone. Spending time alone can give you time to collect your thoughts and process what you're feeling. All teens need some time alone. Some teens need it more than others. However, when a teenager like Alan says, I like to handle things on my own, there may be some cause for concern. Just as Satan caused Eve to isolate herself from her husband, Adam, and not share with him the struggle that she was facing, so the enemy can do the same to you. Satan still uses the same trick of secrecy and isolation on teens today. In addition to Eve, Satan used secrecy and isolation on another Bible character. His name was Judas Iscariot, who was one of the original 12 apostles of Jesus. Jesus was the treasurer of the disciples. He carried the money bag and had a greedy heart. He went to the chief priests to see how much money they would pay him if he would show them where Jesus was so they could have him arrested. Page 140. The chief priests told him they'd pay him 30 pieces of silver for his help. That's in Matthew 26. Before he betrayed Jesus, Judas was a faithful follower of Christ. Something went wrong with his thinking. It wasn't as if he had no one to talk to. He could have talked to any of the other apostles, even Jesus, the most understanding of them all. The battle for Judas began in his thoughts. He allowed Satan to put distance between him and the others. What if Judas had responded to these thoughts by talking to someone? Let's imagine that Judas chose to talk to John because he thought he would be more understanding than Peter and the others. So here we see a conversation, the difference one conversation can make. Judas, John, could I talk with you for a minute? That's Judas talking to John. John, sure. Judas, what's on your mind? Well, I've really been struggling with some thoughts that I don't understand. I felt a big temptation to do something wrong, and I don't know how to handle it. John, can you tell me what it, what it is? Judas, I have these thoughts about turning the master over to the chief priest. All of us know how much they hate him. They've even offered me money. I feel so bad for letting this thought into thought enter into my mind for one second, but I don't know what to do. And John, Judas, I understand why you might feel this way. It's been hard for all of us to be rejected by all our friends and in the temple and even some of our own family members. Where do you where do you think these thoughts are coming from? Don't you think that they're coming from Satan? Let me pray with you that God will give you the strength to overcome this temptation. If you want me to, I'll stay extra close to you until this temptation passes. I also suggest that both of us go and talk to Jesus about this right now. For a while, Judas was having doubts, serious doubts about his relationship with Jesus. I can just imagine some of the thoughts that may have been going through his head. Thoughts like, nobody likes me. I just don't fit into this group. Jesus likes the others more than he likes me. Jesus never really talks to me. I don't think that I could tell him my true feelings. I'm tired of being poor. Or when I'm going to, what am I going to do? So Judas was going down this this spiral, and we know what happens. But what what do you think would have happened if he would have had that conversation with John? You know, in the scheme of all that God had planned, we know that God had planned Christ to be crucified, and that's that's the way it came about. But here we're seeing an example of how that could have kept Judas from making one of the greatest mistakes in 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 life and rejecting the Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And, and turning him in to be killed. Y'all see a danger where the snake is? This is y'all's assignment, all right? Watch this video and do this assignment. And and I want you to send me a picture of what I'm about to do, okay? To let me know that you've done it. I want you to write down the danger where the snake is on page 141. I want you to write down total isolation. So total isolation and secrecy, secrecy and deception, deception and sin, and then sin, self-destruction. 
All right, yours is going to look a lot neater than mine because I'm doing it real quick, so I'm not taking up a lot of your time today. But I want you to take an index card. I, I just have a piece of paper here. But I want you to take an index card and really write this down um, nicely and put it somewhere that you're going to see it every day. Put it in your mirror, on your mirror or put it on your beside your bed, on the bed stand, uh, put it on the table, wherever you go every every day and, and look at it. Because this is the process that Satan wants wants to do in our lives to keep us of, away from God and to cause us to live our lives in a disobedience to God. When a flaw in a piece of a clay goes unnoticed, it eventually causes the vessel to break in the heat of the fire. Judas didn't allow anyone to see his flaw of greediness or to help him handle the incredible pressure he was feeling. Although it may seem hard, you can learn to open up to others and listen to the input. The next time you're tempted to try to handle all of your burdens on your own, remember these verses. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Proverbs 27, 17. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Proverbs 28, 13. Confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. James 5, 16. So I want you to write down the danger on page 141 and, and how Satan deceives us. And I want you to, to take that throughout this week. I want you to take this what you wrote down and be mindful of how Satan works, especially as we're in quarantine and isolation. We, we must not neglect the fact that God's always with us, that we can't quarantine from God and that we just, we should desire to be in his presence. So use this time to spend time with God. If you have any questions, please let me know and send me that index card. Take a picture of it, send it to me and be sure that you watch this video. Thank you so much. God bless. Keep the faith. Talk to you soon. Grace and peace. Peace out.